All right, what's going on dudes and welcome back to Minecraft. This time we'll be going over a new mod. It's called Tux Weapons, spelled T-U-X rather than T-U-C-K apostrophe S. I think it's named the way it is simply because the mod creator's username is Tux. So anyway, what the mod does is it adds a whole bunch of different weapons into the game. And I think what I like most about it is that all of the weapons with one exception, but we'll get to that later, um, are balanced in some way or another, whereas obviously there are other mods where you can get these obscene explosives or crazy swords and, and crazy gnarliness that just obliterate everything immediately. Um, these all have sort of their, their drawbacks, their perks, and again, they're all balanced in one way, shape, or form, and they seem very well thought out. So let's get started. We'll begin over on the left. I'm sort of going in the order that they're outlined on the, the forum post. So we'll begin with the crossbow. So crafting recipe is like so, and the way the crossbow works is that you, you make it, and then you also have to make your ammo for it. So these are bolts, there are two different types. You have your regular bolt, which is made with iron and a feather, and you have your poison bolt, which is made with a spider eye and a bone. So the way you actually load your crossbow is, um, and it works differently in survival mode. Obviously, we're in creative right now. In survival, when you right-click on a bolt in your inventory, oh no, actually, it's working the same way. So when I right-click on the bolt, you'll notice it went from me having two in my inventory to only having one, and this means that our crossbow is now loaded. Um, given that we were in creative, it would have been loaded regardless, but you can see that mechanic anyway. So now, if we go ahead and use a little test dummy here, I have damage indicators on as well, so we can see exactly how much damage it does. If we can hopefully hit him, stop moving. Um, it does 10 damage when we load it up, and it just loads up like a bow, and uh, there we go. So now let's go ahead and spawn another one. We'll equip the uh, the poisoned bolt this time and see if that makes any difference to our shot. I guess not. I'm, I'm not sure if in creative mode it's simply not equipping it the way it should. We could, if we wanted to, go into survival and equip it that way, and then see if it actually ends up poisoning the spider. So here we'll equip it, and now let's try to shoot him, and it killed him. <laughs> so we didn't even get a chance to try it. We'll try one more time here, give ourselves a poison bolt, and swap on back into uh, survival mode, and then we'll try it once more. So something to keep in mind with the crossbow, is that uh, when you shoot a bolt, it is non-retrievable. You can't get it back. So there we go. And perhaps there's a bug or something because it seems that the poison bolts aren't actually dealing any poison damage. Good to know for the moment, but uh, hopefully it'll be fixed in time. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So these are dynamites. Dynamite, as you might expect, are a throwable version of, uh, I guess, TNT, but they deal like a smaller explosion radius. This is their crafting recipe. Some sand, gunpowder, and string. Pretty logical, if I do say so myself. And let's get far away from the action here. We can throw them and blow things up. Fantastic. That actually didn't do anything because I think it landed in water. But there you go. Now you can see it's dealing some damage. Not a huge explosion, but something cool you can do is you can actually rocket jump with it. <laughs> Phenomenal. Huh. I'm totally playing TF2 right now. Huh. We're quick. Huh. My first my first one was the best. That always seems to be the case. <laughs> my first rocket jump was superior. Anyway, that's dynamite. And obviously you can use it to, to blow up mobs as well. But pretty cool, pretty cool. So moving on to the next thing. This is the fire charge cannon. So the crafting recipe also involves a a new item that's added in with the mod, it's called the Magma Core, and the way you get it is it's something like a 5% drop uh, drop chance from magma cubes in the nether. Again, all this stuff, you need to retrieve it from the nether, so you may as well go to a stronghold, find some magma cubes, and uh, get a magma core so that you can make the fire charge cannon. So um, it uses fire charges as ammo. In creative mode, you don't need to have any, it'll just shoot them. and. Uh, yeah, when you have it, because it's supposedly very heavy, it slows you down a whole bunch. It slows you without giving you the, uh, the the debuff being visible. But nonetheless, I'm sprinting right now, and now I'm just walking, and you go pretty slowly. So you charge it up like a bow, and it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool animation. And then, boom, fire charge shoots out, and it explodes after a, a certain length of time. So 
I am flying so ridiculously slowly right now. Here, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and uh, fire it at the sheep over there. Kaboom! And it's just, just short. Okay, he took a couple damage. Get a little closer. He's done. Alright, here we go. That is the fire charge cannon. And uh, I actually need to retrieve my... I don't know where I uh, put my spider. I think I spawned him in, uh, in survival and got rid of my spawn egg. So I want to get him back. And let's put this away. And we'll move on to the next device. Let me actually time toggle here. So it stays daytime. And the next device is called the Redstone EMP Grenade. So it's crafted like so. You should get three Redstone EMP Grenades in return. And I was testing this out earlier and I'm not sure if it's behaving the way it's supposed to. But uh, the way that the forum post describes it is that when you throw it down, it creates this sort of invisible block that like sends out redstone pulses. Um, and, and sort of the way I interpreted it was that it should continue to emit redstone uh, redstone signal, but it doesn't. The way it seems to work is like if I put a door down here and toss the grenade next to it, it emits a short pulse of redstone, um, but it doesn't like keep emitting redstone. It's just, again, an EMP would be a pulse, so it may be working as it's supposed to. I'm just, uh, the description was a little bit shaky. On the, on the post. But anyway, you can use this to like remotely ignite TNT or just, I don't know, play with people's emotions <laughs> when they see their redstone stuff going off due to ghostly mechanics. Although there is obviously particle effects that they will see when it goes down um, if you're playing with this in multiplayer. So anyway, that's that with the, uh, the EMP grenade thingamadoo hickey. Now we'll move on to uh, more of the, the melee weapon stuff. So this is the Battle Axe. And uh, the Battle Axe does a whole bunch of damage, but it doesn't have super high durability. So let's go ahead and spawn a spider here. We can demonstrate, you get out of there, there you go. How much damage it does. It does nine damage and it crits for 12. So that's pretty substantial. Um, but again, if we were in survival mode, it wouldn't really do, uh, it wouldn't last all that long. And um, bear in mind, that actually, did that one hit KO the dude? Hold on just a second. Ah, that was 14, that's quite a bit, actually. Okay, so it crits for up to 14, it looks like, at least from what we've been able to see there. Keep in mind that you can make this from wood, stone, gold, iron, so on and so forth, all the way up to diamond, obviously. And uh, yeah, that is that for the battle axe. The hammer is made like so, uses six diamonds as opposed to uh, five. And I have an ambulance going on outside my window, so pardon, pardon the noise. Um, so this one's super cool. It's like an explosive melee weapon, so it requires a charge up similar to that of a bow. Um, but then it basically just explodes, so we're going to get away from things. And uh, we'll put down a spider, <laughs> poor hapless spider, and we can get next to him. Hoo, kaboom! <laughs> it deals explosive damage in like a... I don't know how far the radius is. Let's experiment. Let's see. Is he still going to get impacted? Huh. No, a little closer. A little closer. Huh. That only dealt one damage. So you have to be pretty close. Uh, kaboom. And I think he's being protected by the leaves. Are you being... God dang it. Now he's running away. He doesn't want none of this. Okay. Huh. Okay. So it seems like it deals anywhere from like 8 to 10 damage or so. But it's kind of cool. It's just like this explosive melee weapon device thing. Um, I don't know exactly how much the durability is, but uh, I think it's like s just slightly lower than a uh, sword, which is nice, even though it has explosions. It lasts for a pretty pretty good amount of time. All right, perhaps perhaps my favorite is the grappling hook because that's sort of just like a a good a good s skill feature to have. Um, I don't know, if you're a Minecraft character and you want to, I don't know, get out of a sticky situation inside of a ravine or something, then you can simply use a grappling hook. So um, depending upon what material you use, you'll get a different amount of grappling hooks in return, but the performance doesn't vary. So I'd almost recommend, like, don't waste your diamonds on it just so that you get more with one crafting recipe. Just, I don't know, use wood or something and then you'll get one in return. Um, and if we use it, kaboom, and kaboom. I am doing something wrong. 
<laughs> I think that you have to, oh, <laughs> hold on. I have to <laughs> jump. There we go. <laughs> you have to, you have to jump as you retract it. Now I remember. Okay. There we go. Anyway. <laughs> yep. It'll just send you right back to where you were. And uh, yeah, that is grappling hooks. Let's see how far we can get it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, you know, self-explanatory. It is, it is a grappling hook. <laughs> it does what it's supposed to do. And uh, if we had a, a big building next to us, we would be able to grapple up to the top of it. We would be Batman, more or less. All right, so that is that for the grappling hook. Let's move on to knives. So again, all of these following weapons here can be made with anything ranging from wood until diamonds. So the knives are made like so, and uh, they can be stacked on top of each other. And the way they work is they're throwable. They don't deal any extra damage when you simply melee with them. Um, the sort of unfortunate part is that once they're thrown, they can't actually be retrieved. Like they're just done. So it's kind of expensive that you have to actually use, um, and this is in survival, obviously. You have to use like a whole diamond ingot for a single throwing knife. So I don't know, if you're gonna use these, um, bear in mind that they are expensive for what you get out of them. Um, but they deal a reasonable amount of damage in return. So that is that for the knives. Let's move along to the mace. So the mace, made like so, once again, and uh, that'll give you obviously the stone mace, but again, you can get all the way up to diamond, and the mace deals a, a random amount of damage anywhere between below what a sword does and all the way up to like what a, a battle axe does. So that critted for 11, four, nine, we can just keep doing like some hits here. So we get nine, six, seven, just random amounts of damage anywhere, five, seven, anywhere between what a sword would deal and uh, what the battle axe would deal. Crits for nine, what else? <laughs> Crits for six, crits for 11. Whoa, man, crazy. All right, so that's it for the mace. And final two weapons here. This one is a shield. Again, go all the way up to diamond if you'd like. And uh, it just blocks damage. I don't really have anything to attempt to damage me at the moment. I suppose I can spawn a spider and switch into survival mode and then uh, punch it and then block with the sword or something like that. <laughs> or with the shield, and just blocks some damage. So, meanwhile, it's losing durability, as you can no doubt see. And uh, that's that. It also looks like you're really protecting yourself when you go into F5 mode and use it. Look at my magical shielding abilities. <laughs> I am really protecting myself. Get away from me, spider. Get away. I have a shield, and I'm not afraid to use it. Anyway, apparently the, the mod creator is looking into... To, coating in dual wielding, so that would be much more useful, obviously. So that's that for the shield. Let's go back into creative mode. And finally, the spear. This is the crafting recipe. Substitute the, the cobble for whatever resource, once again. Same applies for all those weapons from the battle axe out to the right. And the spear is a throwing weapon. You have a charge up similar to that of a uh, of a bow, obviously, and it's the same sort of animation, which is why it doesn't look quite so natural. Um, but you throw it, and uh, you can retrieve it afterwards. So if we were in survival, say, let's do that really quickly, swap back into survival, you can retrieve the spear after you throw it. And it loses durability, but there we go, he's dead. Woo! All right, cool. So that's it for the spear. That is actually it for all of the, uh, the regular the regular weapons. Now you might recall me having mentioned that there is one weapon that is not exactly fair and balanced, but that weapon doesn't have a crafting recipe. It is simply the frying pan of doom. So the frying pan of doom, well the frying pan of doom, let's just say it's a little overpowered and a little overpowered may be an understatement. So the spider has 16 out of 16 health. Now he has negative 197 out of 16 health. So, um, let's just go ahead and say that it is negative 209 out of 16 health. Um, about twice as powerful as Jerry's sword because, of course, it is the frying pan of doom. And the frying pan of doom must bring doom onto anything it touches. That was a 200 crit. 
So yes, that is the frying pan of doom, and that is the final weapon in the Tux weapons mod. So <laughs> anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed. Actually, you know what? I might go back on my statement. The frying pan of doom may have a crafting recipe. I just don't know what it is because it's not listed on the forum page. I think it's sort of an Easter egg of the mod. If it has a crafting recipe, so be it. But I discovered it simply because I was browsing through the items. <laughs> so if anyone knows the crafting recipe, you can feel free to share it. Other than that, though, if you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching, though, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>